Only Yeshua. Prophet Echo Daniels. Yes, sir. What is it about this song that you love so much? Uh, Bible says, all power belongs to the Lord. All power belongs to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. All power belongs to God. And the song basically talks about thrones. There are kings, and there are thrones, but only Yeshua. It's a very deep song. You know, uh, you, you may be a, a prince, but there is someone higher than you. Mm. You may be a king, but there is someone higher than you. You may think you are in authority, but there's someone who gave that authority to you. Mm. So there's always the greatest. So that's what the song is basically about. There are kings and there are thrones, but only Yeshua HaMashiach, mm -hmm. which is the name of Jesus, mm. as, as, as you came to meet. You know, you know in, in English language, the, the letter J came just f about 500 years ago. So Jesus was actually called Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Let me not go into history. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes it's good to know a little bit of uh, history. Let me say a very good morning to your viewers. A uh, very good morning to our, our listeners. A very good morning to my mother. Uh, Amma JB, she's watching this morning. God bless her and God keep her. And a very good morning to everyone watching us. Uh, you're blessed on Star FM to hear the voice of the ancient prophet. Why do you call yourself the ancient prophet? Uh, discovery leads to consciousness and self-awareness. When you, when you discover who you are, it's, it's, the, it's the background or the backbone of your security and your defense. Mm -hmm. so Jeremiah chapter 16 Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Let me quote the scripture, if I'm allowed. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old path, which of course is the ancient path, the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. Mm. So if you're looking at finding rest for your soul, just as the Lord rests, even our Lord who created in the Bible mm. rested. The word rest means you, you are in a place of, of effortlessness of grace. You are in a place where all things are working for your good. You are in a place where purpose is working and you are in alignment with the Creator. That is finding rest for your soul. Mm. And, and the Bible says that this particular path can only be discovered by Asian means. But, you know, unfortunately, the Bible says, but they said we will not walk therein. So there are people who choose to be charismatic. <laughs> people who choose to be charismatic. This morning I'll cause problems. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are allowed to. There are people who choose to be charismatic. Mm -hmm. There are people who choose to be religious. Mm -hmm. And there are people who choose to be spiritual. Mm -hmm. Every spiritual path is an ancient path, especially in Christianity, in Christian followership. There is an ancient path. So which path are you following? The ancient path, like I said. That's what I did. That's the what, spirituality that's I did. path. Yes. Not the charismatic, not uh, the religious. Charisma is good. But Chari the spirituality. Yeah, especially religion. Religion is not something I'm, I'm very much enthused about. This is where I, I had a problem with people, but I am not very enthused about religion. Religion is basically man looking for God. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But the mission statement of, 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 of God in Genesis 1, 25 and 26, it says that I made you in my image after my likeness. Mm -hmm. so, so, so why are you going to look for God again? What does that mean? Yes. When you say, when God says that, let us make man in our image, mm -hmm. it means that for the better 
uh, for the sake of time, images like the identity of God. Mm -hmm. You are made already in the identity of your God, the creator, the deity. Mm -hmm. Now, which kind of identity is that? That identity comes with a certain form of likeness, which, which, which if I will break it down, I will say purpose. Mm -hmm. So your identification in Christ or in God should bring out your purpose in life. Mm -hmm. That brings you into the place of dominion mm -hmm. because the, the, the essence of the creator's conception in wisdom is dominion over the fishes of the sea. And, and, and the creator is not talking about, about, about uh, tilapia and octopus. If he says dominion over the fishes of the sea and dominion over the fowls of the air, the creator is saying that if you come into the place of alignment or awareness, being in the image of God and having understood the likeness of God, then you begin to have dominion. You understand? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, mm -hmm. so it, until you come to that place of realization, you're not having dominion over no spirit of the of the waters no spirit of the land no kind of of the universe you are, you are just going to be uh, excuse my language like like a leaf just plugged and blown anyway so 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 discovery you know i was prophesied before i came on earth you were prophesied before you came yes. or before you were born before i was born you were prophesied yes yes share me home commands and your woman and obia yes share me home commands and your woman be no that person, so that I won't cause trouble, is likely reincarnated. Who prophesied about you? Opinion opoku efum, or prophet opinion opoku efum. He prophesied ab about me many years ago. Prophesied about you to who? To my mother. Out of her kindness. So opinion opoku efum. The prophet, the Asian prophet, he prophesied about me. What, uh, what did he say to your mother? What did he say to my mother? Yes, what, what was the prophecy? Uh, you have a baby boy. Mm -hmm. The same prophecy the angel brought to Mary. <laughs> it was the same prophecy. Yeah. A so what did he prophecy. say? What did he what, say? What did, the, what did the angel say to Mary? Well, he said, I mean, you, you, you bear a child. Uh -huh. They shall call his name Emmanuel, uh -huh. which means God with us. Uh -huh. Of course, he's going to save mankind, all of that. Well, well, uh, well, uh, well uh, you know, I'm not going to save mankind <laughs> as Jesus Christ, but uh, it was a similar prophecy. You, you have a baby as a year after this time, and uh, the baby shall carry this upon his shoulder. There shall, there shall be this kind of government and the kingdom of God shall be like this and like that with him. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to view those details. Yeah, we um, shall uh, call him wonderful, marvelous, the mighty yeah, one, you know, so, the everlasting so father, the prince of me. peace. And I never knew my mother even never told me until, until I, I, I came to a place of, uh, of depression and, and she, out of my madness, uh, when I went mad uh, and, and the Lord came to visit me, then the Lord, told me to ask my mother and my mother gave me history so the man who prophesied about me the asian mm. prophet the wife is the wife is still alive a very old woman very very old woman i think almost 100 years wow yeah so you said you went you went mad at mm. a point yeah how, how did that happen uh, the call of god is strange especially depending on uh, the nature and what god wants to use you for john the baptist's call led him to the wilderness meanwhile he had a home mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. he, he he actually was the son of a prophet and a prophetess but when the call came the choosing place was the wilderness so the call of god especially for people like us who are sometimes stubborn we don't want to hear the, the voice of god like yourself who have, have prophesied to you and i'm prophesying to you on air that you will do the work of God <laughs> as a pastor. <laughs> uh, when, you, when you choose to refuse, refuse it for a long time, God has many ways of, of getting your attention. And sometimes you wouldn't want to like the experience. So it's better you take the cancer. 
as a pastor? Yes. What kind of pastor? What kind of a pastor? A pastor who shepherds a church. Me, Lantam. Yes. I'm telling you. This is, the, this is not the first time I've told you, is it? I've told you, I think, about five times or so. I'll pray about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I basically call myself the Asian prophet. The Asian prophet, it's just, right. It's just because I go to find out who I am. Mm -hmm. and, and glory be to God for Prophet Nesta Manley, who also uh, told me about myself, uh, opened my eyes to who I was. Mm -hmm. And you know, Sebi, any more this year at Fanta? I'm a fancy. I can well, I can't speak fancy, but I can understand. Uh, sometimes say any more any more this year for Nakwa. When Jesus came, you realize he he was a nonconformist. If, if you study the life of Jesus, mm -hmm. he was a nonconformist. And Jesus did not start doing miracles at the age of twelve. Jesus started doing miracles even from the age of five. You know, and and. And people who are non-conformist are people who are naturally uh, born for a certain assignment. And, and that assignment is what they are focused on. Mm -hmm. so, so that's who I am. Mm. So what, before we even get into you know, the essence of prophecy and all of that, mm. I'm, I'm sure there are people who are watching who would want to understand your journey and how you came to be. Of course, you've mentioned that <laughs> it was prophesied that you would be born and this is what you would become. But you've also mentioned that at a point in time you went mad and through all of that, you know, you discovered your purpose and everything. How did you come to the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? How, how did you get to that point? And then, you know, begin to realize that, okay, this is the calling that God has on my life and this is how I need to walk with him. How did you get there? So, so I've, I've always known that there's a superior authority around me. I just didn't know what it was. I just, I could tell my, those who know me from the past could tell you that I could predict things and it would happen. Mm -hmm. In my school, in Central University, I could predict exam questions and it would come just as I predicted. You know, but I thought it was me being smart. I thought it was me being, you know, intelligent. And, and so I always had this strong intuition when evil is about to happen or something like that. And or I dream about things and they happen. So I knew, I knew that there was something, something unique about me. I just didn't know the modalities and the formalities and the, the rightness of it. Mm -hmm. So um, if you say, how did I become a Christian? Maybe I would want to say, how did I discover God, mm -hmm. the creator, and what assignment he wants me to do on earth? So um, I was sacked in my, my last company, sacked me. <laughs> nice where, where you were working? So you were working in the corporate world? You know, I've worked in about six, seven companies in the corporate and world. And they sacked you? Mm. And what happened after this? The last one, they sacked me. The, the, the one before that, I resigned. Mm. So oh, they, they, were not, they were not sacking me. They were never sacking me. But the last one, they sacked me. Mm -hmm. And that was the call of God. Mm. Because at the time, God then needed, God, God, God saw that it was good timing. So they had to sack me or else I was not leaving. And then uh, the last one I got, even after I was sacked, uh, I decided to resign on a Tuesday because I didn't want the job. And it was a very good position job. I said I didn't want the job again. I just want to be home. And because I felt this strong uh, inner energy in me that I don't belong to where I was. So it was, it was from then that I went mad. And then in my madness, by the grace of God, like I said, uh, the Creator visited me in a form I can relate to. And then I met a prophet by name, Prophet Nesta, Mm -hmm. uh, manly who now began to break down to me what it means what a spirit with me means who I who I am who I was how I was born questions I should ask my mother who I would become and 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 they are all happening mm. and what this prophet said are all happening and I tell you the truth 
He's one person whose prophecy I don't joke with. If he ever calls me mm -hmm. and tells me A, B, C is about to happen, it would happen. So he guided my, my steps. Mm -hmm. So I owe him a lot of thanks and a lot of appreciation. And even uh, Prophet Eric Pasley as well, who also guided my path. I've worked with a couple of prophets, uh, but yeah, they helped me. Mm. And you, you talk about prophecy, mm. right? And how your, your whole life even began with a prophecy. Mm. Wh what is that? Prophecy. Wh wh what is it? Uh, prophecy is just basically communicating the mind of God in a season and in a certain time. It's different from prophetic. It's different from the prophet. Anybody can prophesy. Mm -hmm. You can prophesy as led by the Spirit when the atmosphere is good, when the atmosphere is conducive. Let me tell you a mystery. God is omnipotent. Hmm? But God is not concentrated everywhere. God is omnipotent but not concentrated everywhere. Mm. What does that mean? <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 18. You have Bible on your phone? I do. Jeremiah chapter 18 mm -hmm. and the verse number 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, number 2 or verse 2, Arise and go down to the porter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my words. God is omnipotent. Mm -hmm. So where Jeremiah was, he heard the word of the Lord. Yeah. But where God was concentrated was in the potter's house. Mm -hmm. There is an atmosphere you begin to extract God in a greater portion. So the omnipotency of God is the inferiority of his concentration. Like Moses God was everywhere, but it took a burning bush, which the leaves were not burning off, mm -hmm. to draw the attention of Moses. Right. Moses said, I will not go. I don't want to enter too many scriptures, but, uh, but Moses said, I will not go until your presence goes with us. Mm -hmm. He said, but I've sent you an angel. Moses knew the ancient wisdom that an angel is a gift, not God. If I give you a car, I am not the car. Mm -hmm. So Moses knew by the ancient wisdom that I am, if you give me a, a, an angel, you've given me a gift, but you have not given me your concentrated self, and I need your concentrated self, your presence. And, and the Lord says, my presence will go with you and you will find rest. So even in the presence or the concentrations of God, there are realms. Have I answered your question? Hmm. <laughs> there are realms, even yeah. in the concentration, in the of, concentration God. of God. There are different realms. Yeah, so realms. it's like God exists everywhere, mm. but then there are certain places where you go and you really feel his presence. Why will Elijah travel all the way to cross the Jordan? Mm -hmm so that the chariot will come for him there. Why not in his house? Mm. God is everywhere. Why not in his house? Mm -hmm. There are portals on earth. There are places when you pray. There are atmospheres when you create. There are people when you connect yourself to. That is why I don't want to be around negative energy. Mm -hmm. Like I, I come on an interview and mm -hmm. then I finish and I'm reading comment. I'm not interested in that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? No negative energy. Where I am in the spirit, you are not close. Number two, what I'm talking about, if the Holy Spirit doesn't give you understanding, you will not understand. Mm. Why do I come and read comments and say, oh, he said, she said that, and she said, no. I, I'm clear with the assignment of God on my life. Mm. So no negative energy at all. Anybody, uh, and you, I, I hardly have friends. I don't, I, I'm, I'm a very shy person, if, if, you, if you know. <laughs> if you ask me, I'm very shy, mm. unless I'm working. When I'm working, I'm very different. Mm -hmm. mm. But when you're not working, you're shy. When the spirit of, of, of the creator is not on me, 
I'm a very laid back person. Mm. I see. So, so prophecy is, like you said, speaking the mind of God. Yeah, yeah speaking the mind of God. So, what is the difference between prophecy and prediction? Because when, when we talk about prophecy, we see all these men of God all over the place, you know, prophesying all kinds of things. Um, and people win the elections, NDC win the elections. Um, God showed me this and God showed me that. And sometimes when it doesn't come to pass, it, you know, they find all kinds of excuses, you know, for it. And many people believe that, okay, these men of God are just being smart and just making predictions. So, for example, today if someone says NDC will win the election, it's a prediction because of the kind of current atmosphere that we have. People can sort of look at the economic challenges and all of that and make a prediction. So when it comes to pass, they say, hey, and I prophesied. But maybe they are making a prediction. Mm. And some of them may even add a caveat to it. Okay, God says Donald Trump will win, but if uh, he's not careful, uh, Hillary Clinton will take it away from him. You, you know, those kinds of things, right? Mm. So um, are they, what's the difference between, you know, these men of God prophesying and seeing some of these things? And what kind of things do, does God even show, you know, to people? Does God show people these kinds of prophecy of who will win elections and all of that? Or they are just predictions? One of the main problems in the prophetic ministry mm -hmm. is when people transgress. And what I mean by transgress, you, you can be transgressing in, in the prophetic ministry by not sticking to your call. Not all are called to speak for nations. Not all are called to speak for institutions or for governments or for governance. Not all are called to rule over kings and queens. Every prophet has their own assignment. However, you see, there are realms or rankings in the spirit, like, like just a, like how you have uh, Star FM, the organization, you know, in the institutional structure, mm -hmm. they, they, are, they, are, they are bosses, they are rankings. Yes. So in prophetic ministry or in, in prophetic, as prophets, they are rankings. There are people who are maybe in grade five, grade four, grade three, grade two, grade one. Now, the problem is that ordinarily, prophets shouldn't have been starting churches or being general overseer of a church, ordinarily, unless they give themselves to the tutorship of, of pastorship. Mm -hmm. So it is not in the DNA of a prophet to actually pastor a church. You know, so uh, the problem with the young people like us is that the, the moment we realize the grace is on us or the, the gifts on us, then they start a church. Mm -hmm. But maybe you are just in grade one. You understand? You are just beginning. But you are using your grade one, the gift, to run a church. Now, it's a very compound question because I, I, I can go into a deep, deep, deepness and just tell, and even tell you that um, the, the gift of God does not necessarily mean God is present with the person. The gift of God doesn't necessarily mean God is present with the person. With the person. So someone may have a gift. Is that what you're saying? Someone may have the gift. Mm. A gift of, say, prophecy. Prophesying. But it doesn't mean God is with the person. If I give you a But if God is not with the person, how can the person prophesy? If I give you a Range Rover mm -hmm. and I give you money to buy fuel to mm -hmm. drive it, mm -hmm. you are driving a Range Rover, are you? Yes. I could even make it in your name, your papers. Mm -hmm. Am I the Range Rover? No. So you can you've, have you've my, given me the range over. So you can have my gift and not my person. So I, I can choose to spend time with you beyond the range over that gets you and me very close. Mm -hmm. There's more to somebody who has been able to give to you a range over than just the range over. So, so many people are lured by the giftings and the manifestations of the gift. Mm -hmm. But God is not there. It's very, it's very easy for God to give people a gift. But it's difficult for God to concentrate himself onto a person. Does God take that gift away if the gift is given and the person is not using it? There's a scripture. Or that, using it how they should. There's a scripture that, that is miss, I believe, is not taught right. Uh, the, the giftings of God are without repentance. You know, 
what it means to me is that it's not within repentance. It's without repentance. The giftings of God are without repentance. Repentance. So anybody at all who has not repented of their character can still have the gifting of God. Anyone who hasn't repented of their character. So someone can be a womanizer. And still be very gifted. And still be, have the gift of God. And still have the gifts of God, but not God himself. Now, you, let, let me so, know. So, a man, so, so someone can have the gift of prophecy and still be prophesying and seeing things in the spirit and be a womanizer. Of course. Easy. Or an <laughs> alcoholic. Easy. Or a thief. Easy. That is why the word is called, the wrong word is called, God is using him. But that shouldn't have been the word. He's been used by God. The deity is the one in possession of him. Deities love possession. Not humans possessing deities. Mm. So when you say to me, hey, Yang Kupo, you the power. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The understanding to me is mm -hmm. completely different because God can use even a donkey in the Bible to speak, to prophesy, mm -hmm. even a donkey. Mm -hmm. So if God can use a donkey and, and, and a human be to prophesy, what, what, what's the big deal? Now, First Kings chapter 22, verse 6. Let me show you something. I'm still answering that question you answered me in, mm -hmm. in, in deeper understanding so people will learn. Mm -hmm. And, Jehovah, and Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Enquire, I pray thee, at the word of the word of the Lord to the day. Verse 6, The king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And 400 of these prophets said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Verse 7, and Jehoshaphat said, Is there not there here a prophet of the Lord besides the, that which we might have inquired of? You've, you've spoken to 400 prophets. Mm -hmm. 400. What's your problem? Why are you asking for more? Jehoshaphat, the saying that the 400 prophets were not speaking from God. There's a realm you are not speaking from. Mm -hmm. Joseph had knew. Mm. Now let me show you. Verse 8. And the king said of Israel, the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There's yet one man, Micaiah, prophet Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Verse 9. The king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither Micaiah the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gates of Samaria. And all the prophet prophesied before them. And Zedekiah the son of Kinana made him horns of iron. It's like, like, like an archbishop. Arch Mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And he said, Thus said the Lord, With thee shalt thou push the Syrians until thou have consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and, and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hands. But Micaiah came, let me cut a story short, and gave a different prophecy. Mm -hmm. And said, King, from where I sit in the spirit, a meeting has been done by the gods and by the creator's influence. A lion spirit. If you go, those of you who want to read the story, First Kings 22, a lion spirit has been sent into those 400 prophets. When you go, you lose. <laughs> what you people call confirmation, you must be very careful. Mm. 400 confirmations, including the archbishop of the time. And the Bible yet says, only Micaiah said, and Micaiah put a vow and said, if you go to this war and you return, come and kill me. 
against your 400 prophet. Even after the archbishop had slapped him in this particular text, when they went to the wall, the king Ahab died according to the word of Micaiah. Mm. So, why do some prophets' prophecies fail? Their rankings. Mm -hmm. It depends on who is speaking. People, I said earlier, are reincarnated. They have deities in them. The Bible said, and Jesus met a man and asked him, what's your name? He said, we are, my name is Legend, for we are many. When he was possessed. He was demon possessed. Everything you have negative has, has positive. Mm. Same way you have a legend, demons possessing one man, the Holy Spirit has diverse wings of spirits. Mm -hmm. of, or let me say spiritism. That can be concentrated in a man. So there are ranks and, 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 and realms where when people speak, they can override you who, are, who is in level one. Elijah gave a prophecy. After a, a minstrel has been played, they went to the war and lost. Sometimes ancient uh, uh, ingredients can be used to counter certain prophecies. Ancient ingredient. So is it that is it that God is not speaking clearly to to these men of God? Because I mean, one would say pr prophecy is what God has revealed, right? Speaking the mind of God, by or, the, ranking, or this ranking. is or this is what God. So is it that the one who saw the prophecy and the prophecy failed didn't hear from God? No, that's why, that's why I'm explaining by ranking. You see, I give you. So, Jeremiah so does it mean that God changed? No, God is because God. if because if God's word is one, mm. because God God is the God's, I am that God's I am, word right? Is not one. In in the sense that you know, if God says A, mm. that is what it is. That's not what. That, who told you that? Is that not what it is? No, I just give you a scripture. Because if God says that, this is what I'm going to do. Mm. That's not what. If that's why. I gave Does you he Jer change his mind? That's why I say I gave you Jeremiah eighteen one and two. We read a scripture. Did you see? Mm -hmm. In or does it mean house. does it mean that God is allowing somebody to change what He says is going to happen? Because if God reveals that this is what is going to happen, does it mean that somebody can go into the realms of the spirit and change what God has said is going to happen? Mm. I mean, that, that, that does not make God God. Does it? And some people I don't know how to say it in, in English. Uh, places were created before mankind. Or human being, mm -hmm. okay? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Places yeah. were created before human beings were created. Mm -hmm. Now, spirits were created before human beings were created. There are deposits of words of the Creator in these places, governed by these spirits, before mm -hmm. you, the human being, was born. So I gave you a scripture and I said, Jeremiah 18, 1, 2. If not for the porter's house, Jeremiah will not hear words. The porter's house is not literal. It doesn't represent a house. It's, it, it can represent a realm, an atmosphere, a place. God's words are deposited in places. Why do you think you go to church? To fellowship with other Christians. That's one reason. There are other reasons. Yeah, yeah. You know, reasons. to hear you the know. word of God. So, so, so there are rankings. Now, primarily, a born prophet is, is not to be compared to a gifted prophet. To Jeremiah, he said, I knew you when you were in your mother's womb. I've, I was with you. I formed you. I knew your name. Those people cannot be compared to imparted people. Imparted people are normally gifted people. Mm -hmm. There are people who can prophesy and can do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. There are people who can prophesy and tell you and work it out for you. So, in, prof in prophet or amongst prophets, there are different and, and diverse kinds of prophets. But, but 
the main is basically, I think, to but people people by human human means like to categorize things and a lot of things. You know, even by the gifted prophet, there is a dynamic prophet, there is a, a, a mandated prophet, there is this and this and that. I don't like all those long stories. There is basically a born prophet and one who is not born a mm. prophet. So you can you can give all those names to the ones who are not born prophet, and then and then categorize them by the grace of God. So how, how does prophecy work? How do you see what God is revealing? Habakkuk chapter 1. Open your Bible. Mm-hmm. Habakkuk chapter 1. Yeah, I, I should be sure. Habakkuk chapter 1. Is it verse 2 or is it Habakkuk chapter 2? Habakkuk chapter 2. Mm-hmm. Chapter verse two. 1. Verse one. I, I will stand, stand upon. Yeah, read, mm-hmm. read. I like it. I will stand at my watch and station myself to. No, the King Ramparts. James version. Uh, I, I this is this is NIV. Let me. Do you have King James? I have NIV. Let me let me read King James. Mm-hmm. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And I will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I am re- I'm reproved. I will watch to see what he will say unto me. Mm -hmm. Do you watch to see things? Or you listen to hear things? Both, I guess. Do you watch to see things? Well, if you want to see something, you have to look at it. So you watch it. Really? I can't choose not to look at your face and still listen to you? Yeah, that's listening, yeah. But but if so if you watch, you are looking at it with your eyes. If you're listening, you are you are, you're so listening so with your ears. What does, what a prophet is saying is that mm-hmm. when you say God spoke to me, mm-hmm. I like to rather say God ministered to me. So God doesn't have a language; He speaks. God's language is not Hebrew or Greek. Okay, God's language is not uh, English. So God is not even called God. The creator is not called God. Okay? So the creator ministers or communicates based on your level of understanding and how best you can interact with him. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's how God ministers. And there are diverse means. He could use a human being. He could use your body language. He could use your spirit's being. There are days you can feel like not going to a place. You, you just feel like not going to a place. It's God speaking, quote unquote, to you. Mm. There are days you see somebody and you just don't like them. You don't want to be close to them. It's God speaking to you. There, there are people or, or a group of, of people you don't want to join their company. You understand? So God communicate in diverse forms he, 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 he said he said of moses for moses i speak to him face to face mouth to mouth but for some of for others i speak to them in dreams and in visions so that, so I, I i don't like to inferior my creator and say there are five ways of hearing from god i know people say those things and mm-hmm. they themselves list what's that's their experience Okay, because I feel like if I do that, I'm, I've limited God. Mm. There, there cannot be five ways of knowing God. <laughs> there cannot be five ways that God of the cre- the five ways the Creator speaks. It's not possible. Mm. He speaks in many diverse ways. Many, uncountable. Mm. How I met the Creator will completely be different from how you met your Creator. To the Lord, my God. It's not the same as the Lord your God. That is why Ruth told Dinah, let your God be my God. But, but Ruth also had God. You understand? So God communicates in diverse means mm. and in diverse forms. Mm. Let, let's, not, let's not bottle God. Let's not religious God. So, so what should someone do when a prophet prophesies to them? What should they do? Because you've mentioned that you know, there, there are different grades. And someone may say something and somebody else in the realms of the spirit, Mostly, depending on the grade, may do something. So if you, for example, you've told me that, you know, I'm going to be a pastor. So what do I do about it? Mm. Yeah. 
So if someone prophesies to someone, oh, you are going to die, or someone prophesies that, oh, you are going to buy a car, or someone prophesies, oh, you are going to get a new job, prophesies, oh, you are going to get a visa to travel, prophesies, oh, your marriage is doing this, is doing this, is doing that. Based on what you have said, what should the people do? So, like I said, there are rankings in the spirit. Mm-hmm. There are people by the by the covenant and 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 realm they occupy in their spirit. When they speak, it's enough. No man can can overturn it. God throws men into every system like that. There are people who are like God. When they speak, no man can overturn it. It will happen. Mm-hmm. There are people God give that sovereign mandate to. That is why he said, for Moses, I speak to face to face. There are people whose words does not return to them void unless it has accomplished. So, 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 you will be a, you will be a, you will be a, so, kase wo, wo be yare wo, wo be yare wo, wo be enti min dalen. But coming down to that level, sometimes there are factors. Okay, so normally, you would have to pray into it. You have to fast into it. You have to believe it. Uh, a word I don't like to use a lot. <laughs> you, you have to faith in it. But those two levels, if, if you know God, okay, I don't believe in believing in God. You tell people to stop believing in God. Yeah. W- what does that mean? Why do you believe in God? I knew God before Bible. It is normally people who knew who, who got to know God in in Bible that believe in God. When the Bible says that, I, I wish you can open the scripture. Uh, they that know they are God, mm-hmm. they shall do exploits. Yes. No, I wish people uh, we will get that scripture. Um, Daniel chapter eleven. Uh, Daniel chapter 11, verse 2, verse 32. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. What does your Bible say? Daniel chapter 11, verse 32 yeah. says that... Mm. says that... Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. With yeah. flattery, he will corrupt those who have violated the covenant, but the people who know they are God will firmly resist him. And mine says that in King James Version, it says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know they are God shall be strong and do exploits. Mm-hmm. When you believe in God, you don't have a proof of what you're talking about. Believe is religious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, Jay-Z believe that's what it means Mm -hmm. have faith that's it's 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 similar to you to 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 believe but if you know god if you know your god daniel 11 32 those that know they are god they shall be strong because i know the god with me as i'm tomorrow i know i will grow stronger so you're saying that Believe don't in believe his babies. Know him. That's mm. what you're saying. Yes. Don't mm. believe in him. Don't mm. just believe in him. Know him. Know him. Okay. I'm not saying believe in him. Believe in is just the beginning. There's the beginning stage. Mm-hmm. But but get to know God. Right. For yourself. Right. Because it is in that knowing of this God that you will get to be strong and do exploits in whatever it is you want to do in life. I can, by the grace and mercies of God, replicate results in my life because I know my God. It's not a thing of doubt. It's not a thing I'm thinking, maybe he will or he will not. Mm-hmm. No. It's about knowing that I, he will. I'm so sure. You're sure that he will. If a thousand rise up against me, I know they will fall. Mm-hmm. I'm so convicted. So that's what you mean by no, know this God. No God. Don't believe. No. Know your God. Okay. When you when you are in a place of belief, you 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 are always crying on God and being a baby 
and etc. But when you know this, your God, and and it, and it's clear. I love how Daniel put it. He said, "Those who know they are God." I will win your coupon. Now it's shining. It by some okay, chero. The covenant I have with my God mm. is my anchor. Mm. That covenant is what keeps me. So when I hear people talking, otherwise I don't time. I don't have time for comment and people planning and plotting and saying all kind of things. Okay. So um, I mean, we've got just about five minutes to to wrap this up. Um, mm. You know, so I mean, you're widely known as a conference speaker. You know, an ancient prophet, like you've said, but. Um, you haven't organized any conferences this year. Why? What's 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 happening with your ministry? Hey, long term, a bit awesome. So so um, I don't like to lie about things. I I like to be very honest about things. In as much as being that, also being, wisdomatic. I have a marital issue going on. And for that, which, for that reason, uh, I was cancelled by, by some fathers who thought it wise that due to the pain that I was going through in the beginning of the year, I'll put down uh, the ministry and heal and, and, and uh, ref refreshing myself because you are leading people, you want to you want to be sane in communicating the oracles of God to these people in understanding. You don't want to um, you don't want to use your hurt or your bitterness against someone else. You want to properly heal. So uh, my absence from my my personal conferences, mm -hmm. you know. It, it's that's when, with the raw time ministry. That's with the raw time ministry. It was when this issue happened to me that I, I, I never knew I had such kind of love as people who really think about me. When I was coming to your show this morning at 6.30, a pastor called me, and I've always said in my heart that God knows my heart. If there was, there's anything called heaven that anybody would go, it is Pastor Benjamin. Mm. That man is an emblem of who I call a man of God from the, from the time when I was even not a, a, a Christian whatsoever. Mm. But he called me at this morning, 6.30. He said, Brother, the Lord says I should pray for you. So while we were in prayer, dwellers, his name is his church is Dwellers Chapel in Kumasi. Mm. He said, while we were in prayer, the Lord said we should pray for you. And we prayed for you. And we've heard about your matter. And we want you to know that God is with you. Look, it meant so much to me. Mm. I'd never thought a man like that would call me. Mm. People have called me. Prophet have called me. I mean, but you see, there are people who, can, who you, would, you would never think. He says, I says I, I, like my brother, David Rauf. Sometimes a uh, prophet David Rauf in, in, in Bolga, when he's speaking to me, you realize this person cares about you. So in every situation, the Bible says all things work for our good. Right. So I, I'm not organizing conferences basically because um, I'm going through a phase in marriage, um, which I left uh, and by the grace of God. <laughs> all will end soon and um, trust in God. By next year, 2025, we will be back in organizing our conferences. And but I'm preaching for people. You know, I'm even preaching in Ho, uh, come 4th of August right. by the grace of God. Right. And my my mentor, Prophet Emmanuel J, is also having born to prophesy, if you may permit, uh, starting from um, 4th of yeah. August. Um, uh, I think to about good, good morning to him. August. Yeah. Good morning to him. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, we are working, you know, and <clears throat> and one of my my um, excuse me, one of my my main job is to work spirituality for people individually. Right. I haven't slept like three days because you know I work for people individually, one on one, mm -hmm. and choir of God for people. Mm -hmm. It's a conference that's been penned that to hold, and and view and our 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 ministry people should understand that next year mm -hmm. we will bring a new name to the ministry and start afresh. 
life is not a competition. We are not competing with anybody. Ministry is not a competition. We, we are okay. Uh, we are okay where we are, and we, we listen to the elders who guide us. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Prophet Echo Daniels. Yeah, can I put my number? Yes, you can. My number is 0244-856-983. 0244-856-983. God bless you. God bless you too. And uh, we'll end our conversation here. It's been great having you here in the studio. Mm. Thank you very much for joining us. Mm. And uh, gracing the studio with your presence. Thank you so much, my brother Lantam. I'm, I'm so grateful for your life. I appreciate um, a, a, big, a big good morning to your, your boss, Bolare. Mm. God bless him. Mm. And God bless all Star FM crew and workers. I appreciate your love and concern every time I'm here. Thank you very much. So you've just heard us speak to Prophet Echo Daniels, uh, talking about prophecy, what it means, and uh, some of the inner workings of it. It's 8.24 a.m. There's still more to come up here on Star 103.5 FM. Do stay tuned. We'll be right back.